I want to thank you for joining me out here in the shop once again. Today I am just going to be doing a uh, quick run over of how I grind my knives. I've gotten quite a few questions on how to get a consistent bevel. So I'm going to be doing uh, two knives. One of them is going to be flat ground and then the other is going to be hollow ground. Now I've only hollow ground a couple of knives so I'm not an expert uh, but pretty much any uh, any practice you have doing flat grinds can be moved over um, and, and you can use the same kind of experience to do hollow grinds. It's really not that much different. So you guys will get to see me do that in real time. And I'm going to show you guys the knives that I have here. This one is going to be the one that I am going to hollow grind. They're both AEBL. And this one, this Tonto, is going to be what I am going to flat grind. And I'll show you how I grind both the primary bevel as well as the forward bevel and how I get those all straight and true and make sure everything lines up um, because tontos can be pretty tricky. So, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the camera over by my grinder and uh, I'm going to walk you guys through exactly how I establish a flat bevel and how I keep it flat. Um, so there'll probably be quite a few parts where I stop and give a little explanation and especially with the Tonto I will most likely be doing a bit more explaining how to get the angles all set up correctly on the Tonto. And then real quick before I start making some sparks I just wanted to mention that I do have a Kickstarter going primarily for my precipice folder this one is the drop point design. The blade and handle scales and pocket clip are all AEBL. Um, there is also a titanium handle version as well as a titanium Damascus handle version and there's different blade options as well and this is one of them. This is uh, the Tonto option with a thumb stud instead of a flipper tab and uh, so I thought it would be kind of apt to show this guy off. I will also be adding more bone picker options to my Kickstarter. This one is the version 2 Tonto bone picker. It has a nice little bottle opener there. This is the clip point version, the bone picker version 2. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of recurve in the, in the blade there. It looks really cool. And then there is the version 2 of my uh, Kiridashi bone picker. And then uh, this one, nice little karambit bone picker. It's a version 2 as well with the uh, bottle opener. So I will be adding more options to my Kickstarter. If you're interested, the link will be down below. All right, so I have the first knife here. And I'm going to use a well-worn belt to just kind of take the edge off. Um, just because when you do that, it makes your sharp belts last longer. So I'm going to do that real quick. And then I'm going to change up to a fresh 36 grit belt. And we'll get this flat ground. Alright, so the first step really is just to establish a small flat bevel. Now, the plunge line is going to start right about here, uh, but because there's a choil here, I don't want to start trying to grind it here until the grind line is brought up. Otherwise, your grind line will get all wiggly, and uh, you want to keep it as flat and straight as possible. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. And then uh, it's going to be time to really, really grind into this knife. Okay. 
All right, so you can see I've now brought the uh, bevel up the knife, and that's essentially what we're doing. The edge is already nice and thin. All you have to do is focus on keeping this line straight and just bring it up the knife. That way you're only working really with uh, moving your grind line in one direction. And all you have to do is keep the knife flat against the platen and don't fight the belt. Just kind of let it slowly take that material off while keeping the knife at, a <clears throat> at as close to the angle that you want as possible. So you want the, uh, the belt to ride the top of the bevel here. That's where most of the uh, material removal will take place. And you don't want it to bite the edge because then you'll get wiggles and uh, you can even just you know totally ruin your grind. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Get that one to match. And then I'm going to do the front bevels. So now that I have them pretty much equal, I'm going to do the front bevels. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus my grinding right here where the flat is. And I'm going to grind in bringing the bevel this way. If you focus your pressure on the belt down here, um, you'll just grind in and you'll totally mess it up. So you want to start with your pressure up here because it's still full thickness as opposed to here is a point. So I essentially want to grind more material off of the thicker section than I do here. I actually don't want to grind anything off here at all. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that started and I will uh, probably stop a couple times through just to explain what I'm doing. But let's go ahead and finish up this knife. I just wanted to do a quick explanation. You see how starting at the thickest part of the knife creates that kind of secondary grind line. And when you get it where you want it, that grind line will line up with the, uh, I guess it's the apex of the two bevels right here, this point. Um, and this is the easiest way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep grinding, bringing this line up and uh, we'll get this bevel all set up. Alright, and there you have it. Very clearly defined bevels. And uh, one thing to note is the thicker the stock you use, the easier it is to get these very 
uh, you know, very defined bevels. Now, this one is a little higher on this side over here, so I'll probably touch that up at a higher grit. But that is the rough grinding of a Tonto. And so now, I'm going to grab the other one, and I'm going to change out the platen to my contact wheel, and we'll get that one hollow ground. So, the biggest change, really, is that I don't want to grind up here. If I grind on the top of the belt, if it catches the knife, it'll throw it back at me. So, I'm going to grind a little bit more towards the bottom. So if it catches the knife, it's going to throw it away. It's going to throw it that way down in front of me and not into me. Now, in this one, I'm actually going to show, I'm going to try to show a little bit better how to get your grind lines all lined up. Because really, it's not so much about where you start them you can move your grind lines around. It's just uh, learning to have a steady hand enough to gently move your grind lines up to where they match on both sides. Alright, so I actually have purposefully ground the plunge lines in a different area. See, they don't line up. They don't line up how they should. And I did that purposefully because I'm going to show you how to fix that. So, you see this, this plunge line is the farthest back. So, I'm going to grind this one to match it. By focusing my grinding right here for a minute and kind of pushing the belt into the knife here. So, I'm going to get you guys a good angle so you can see how I do this. But I'm pretty happy with that. All right. And you can see it's not absolutely perfect, but it's good enough for preheat treat. I'm quite happy with that. So these are all nice and ground now, and you can see that uh, concavity in that hollow grind, and I really, really am excited to do more of them. And uh, I did change up the overall profile of this knife and straightened up the back, but I really, really love how that looks. So. Now that these are done, I can drill the handles and get them heat treated. I just wanted to show you guys uh, kind of a quick explanation as to 
how to learn to start grinding. Um, really the most important thing is uh, muscle memory. There is no, no secret to it and uh, I decided to start grinding without a jig without a you know a support table on my grinder just because it uh, allowed me to grind much more complex bevels and uh, the only jigs that I've used for the last you know almost four years have been my hands even on swords I don't use jigs or support table um, just because my own two hands can be a lot more versatile um, so really just practice lots and lots and lots of practice and eventually your hands and your arms will become used to it and then you'll become repeatable in your grinds um, so when I when I really decided I wanted to start making knives I actually ordered uh, ordered 30 feet of 1095 and I think I made 40 knives out of it all at once in one batch um, I think I think like 33 were successful some of them ended up being mistakes and learning experiences and they did not make it to the end um, but that really taught me how to grind, it was just getting on the grinder, grinding for like, you know, a week straight, trying to get bevels where I wanted them, and eventually you do get used to feeling where the knife is riding on the belt. So that is where I'm going to call this episode. If you're new to the channel and you want to see me build in cooler knives rather than just grind some, then please like and subscribe. It really helps me to continue building the channel and doing awesome projects like these and many others for you guys. You can find the links to my social media down below, as well as the uh, link to my Kickstarter project. So I want to thank you guys for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Let's Make a Knife.